Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. I'm Miss Joanna, and I am so happy to be joined today with Diane Olivo Pazer, Senorita Diane, right there. Um, Senorita Celia, over there. And Senorita Patty. Uh, we are so excited, everyone. Thank you for joining us for our live DIA celebration. Before we begin, I'd all like to thank the Library Foundation of Los Angeles for supporting DIA and so many other library programs for children. Yes, we give them all the thanks, Senorita. I mean, Miss Joanna, I want you, Senorita, already. That's um, fine. <laughs> El Día de los Niños, El Día de los Libros, Children's Day or Book Day, commonly known as DIA, is a nationally recognized initiative that emphasizes the importance of literacy for all children from all backgrounds that accumulates yearly on April 30th, which is today. So today we're bringing together librarians from all over the city to show us how they celebrate DIA because DIA is also an ongoing commitment to connecting children and their families to diverse books, languages, and cultures the app programming at, Los An at the Los Angeles Public Library took place throughout the month of April. To celebrate DIA, we had a variety of programs such as story times with our amazing librarians, as well as with storyteller, Aina Buckner Barnett. We got to dance along to bilingual Spanish songs and Armenian indigenous music from incredible musicians. And we even got to see the Philippine folk dance troupe on Wednesday. And we had engaging book discussions throughout the week. And throughout these programs, we asked children what inspired them. We'll be featuring their stories throughout the afternoon, and everyone who, con who contributed will be getting a free book, un libro gratis. Where if, you were, if you're just watching today, you too can get a free book. We'll be posting this link throughout the afternoon for LAPL users. There it is, right there. Yeah. Books available while supplies last and pickup will be at library to go hubs and branches that are opening for limited in-person service next week. Yay. Now let's go ahead and start our celebration with Jennifer from the Palms Rancho Park Branch Library. Jennifer! <sighs> Yay. Hi. Hi everyone! All right, we will ask this for everyone. Jennifer, how do you, Dia, and then we will leave the screen to you. Oh, well, I am all about telling stories. And that's actually what I'm about to do right now. <laughs> so thank you for joining me today. And I'm sorry, I know that the window's behind me. I'm going to move in a minute, but I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about this book that I have here and then share some puppets. And then I'm going to tell you a puppet story with this puppet stage that I'm sitting next to. So I hope that everybody has had a chance to check out the DIA book list. If you go to lapl.org slash DIA, there is a list of wonderful books, mostly picture books that your family can share together. And one of them is Saturday by Oge Mora. And it is actually a story about Ava and her mother going to see a puppet show on a Saturday, but they have lots of other plans too. They go to the library, they go to the park, they have all sorts of plans before the puppet show. Uh, and some of the things don't go quite the way they want them to. But what I love about this book is it's not a book about the puppet show. It's a book about everything that happened beforehand. And it goes to show that we all have stories to share. We can tell stories that we've read in books. We can tell stories that someone has told to us, like I'm about to tell you. Or we can tell stories about ourselves, about things that we've done in our own lives. Or you can even make up a story like Oge Mora did when she wrote this book. Let me get that out of the way. I'm going to share a story with shadow puppets right now. And this is my shadow puppet stage. It's just paper taped inside a cardboard frame. <laughs> so anyone could make one of these. Um, and then here is one of my shadow puppets. It's a rabbit and it's just, actually it's a straw that I've stuck onto the back of a paper. So if you have some thick paper or like some thin cardboard, like maybe a cereal box or something, you can actually make your own shadow puppets. This one, the stick is sticking out the back because I'm gonna put it against 
the shadow puppet screen, but you know, you don't even need the screen for shadow puppets. Like here's one where I have a pencil <laughs> taped on the bottom. If you have a light and a wall, you could hold this between the light and the wall and look at the shadows on the wall. You don't even need puppets. <laughs> you could use your body, you can use your hands. What if you made a rabbit with your hand? How would that look in shadow? You can experiment with that. And if you're not into puppets or shadows, you can draw pictures, you can act something out, or you can just tell the story. There's so many ways to do it. But I'm gonna turn this, the lights on behind, oops, behind my stage. And then, excuse me, I have to move my camera a little bit here. All right, now let's get to the story. I'm gonna share a trickster tale. A trickster tale is a story about a character that as you might guess from the name, likes to play tricks on other characters. And we find trickster tales all over the world. In fact, a very famous one some of you may be familiar with is Anansi, the spider who came from West Africa with countries like Ghana. Though we know Anansi from all over the world, a lot of Caribbean nations like uh, Haiti, no stories of Anansi because when people move from one place to another, they bring their stories with them. A story that came from America, a character, a trickster character, is Raven from the Native American people of the Northwest. And Raven stole the sun from the gods and put it in the sky so that all of us could enjoy it. Maybe you've heard stories of Br'er Rabbit from the American South. Br'er Rabbit is another trickster tale character. Br'er Rabbit originally comes from Africa as well. And I'm going to tell you a story from Africa with rabbit in it today. This is a story from East Africa, the country of Kenya. Though in this story, rabbit is not the trickster. Rabbit has a trick played on her. And it starts with her house which was a hollow log. And one day, Caterpillar was crawling along and went into her house and hid. And Rabbit came home and she saw the footprints around and she said, who's in my house? And Caterpillar called out in a loud voice, which sounded even louder because he was in the hollow log. I am a great warrior, son of the long one. I smash the rhinoceros to the earth. I make dust of the elephant. <gasps> oh no, said Rabbit. She was so scared. If he can make dust of an elephant, what could it do to a little rabbit like me? And off she ran to get help. And she came back with a friend of hers. The leopard. Who's in Rabbit's house? She said. And the caterpillar said, I am a great warrior, son of the long one. I smash the rhinoceros to the earth. I make dust of the elephant. <gasps> if you can make dust of the elephant, what could you do to a leopard? <gasps> and off leopard ran. And poor rabbit had to go find someone else to help her. She came back with another friend. Boom, 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 boom. Rhinoceros. 
Who's in Rabbit's house? He called. And the caterpillar said, I am a great warrior, son of the long one. I smashed the rhinoceros to the earth and may make dust of the elephant. <gasps> oh no, I don't want to be smashed to the earth, said the rhinoceros. <gasps> and off he ran. And poor rabbit had to go find someone else to help her. And she came back with another friend. Boom, 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 boom. The elephant. Who's in rabbit's house? Called the elephant. And the caterpillar said, I am a great warrior, son of the long one. I smashed the rhinoceros to the earth. I make dust of the elephant. Oh no, said the elephant. I don't want to be smashed into dust. And off the elephant ran. What was Rabbit going to do? There was no one else to help her. But suddenly, boing, 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 along came a frog. The frog had been sitting under a bush and had seen the whole thing. So he went up to the log and he puffed out his throat and he said, Broop, broop. I am the mighty leaper. The ground splits where I sit. I am green, slimy, and vile. <gasps> and when the caterpillar heard that, he came out of the log and he said, Oh no, please don't hurt me. I'm just a caterpillar. Oh no, it was just a caterpillar the whole time. Do you know what Rabbit did? When she saw that, did she get angry? No, she laughed. <laughs> because you know what? She loved to tell, make, she loved to play tricks on others. And she appreciated a good joke, even when it was played on her. <laughs> and that is the end of our story the fearsome beast from Kenya. Thank you, and I hope you all enjoyed it. Wow, Jen, thank you so much. That was such a good story. Uh, I love your puppet. I'm already thinking about what I can do at home to make my own <laughs> I can do a baby butterfly. I can do a rabbit. Uh -huh. yeah, I, can do rabbit. Elephant. I don't know. <laughs> try it. Try it. Uh, oh. okay. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, we have to be. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you again, Jen. What a great start to our Dia celebration. And for those watching, you are going to see a Jen, Jen later on in the program, too. So excited. All right. We will see you then. Oh, my gosh. All right. Um, let's see. I think I can do. Oh, I can do a dog. A dog? A dog. Yes. Dog. That's, I'm very proud of my dog. I'm very proud with the dog. <laughs> what other animals does she have? She had the, uh, the rabbit. Frog, the rabbit. Frog. Oh, yeah, the rabbit. Frog. Frog. In the comments, let us know what kind of what kind of shadow puppets can you make with your arms? Oh, hands. Hands. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> right. That was an arm. But that was so great. Um, all right, and so now for our next activity, uh, it was our next activity was inspired by the first Dia book discussion. Sing a song. How lift every voice and sing inspired generations. There are two winners that joined the discussion, and they will be receiving that book. Would you, if viewers want, would you viewers want a book choice of your own? By joining us today, you can have your book, a book of your choice too. So. Uh, you can go ahead and go to that link, and and um, and get a book. You can find it on the chat too. You can find it in the chat too. Yes, I'm going to put it in the chat now, everyone, so that 
Um, it's actually the link to a Google form where you can choose the kind of Dia book that you want for free and to keep forever. So I, I wanna show you some of um, one of the choices um, because Dia is a celebration of all kinds of languages and backgrounds where sign language is a language. So this is one of the books that you can choose from, My First Baby Signs. And look, when a baby wants food, baby signs. Oh my gosh, it moves. It does. It's so cool. So throughout this program, we'll feature some of the books that you can choose by watching and taking part in this Dia celebration. Um, all right. Sorry, Sally. I, I, I was just so excited about the books. I, I, I interrupted your introduction. Who do we have next? That's totally okay. I'm excited about the books. I want that one. So I'm going to kind of fill that okay. out. <laughs> um, so next, so thank you everybody. Visit that link in your chat and sign up for the book that you want. Uh, I am so thrilled to introduce Michelle and Shukafe for our next program. Okay. There's Michelle. And let's see if we can find Shukafe. There they are. Hello. All right. Uh, we will leave the screen to them. All right. Hello, everybody. I am Shukufe from Children's from Encino Tarzana Library. And I am Michelle. I am the Children's Librarian at the Palm Rancho Library. And we are so glad to present Dia Songcraft. Yes. Uh, we got the <coughs> our craft from the sing a song that is written by Kelly. Stalling Leon, and then uh, we made a craft out of that. And if you like to see the book or read again the book, you can get it from the www.lapl.org. You can get it as ebook, or you can get it as regular book from one of those library to go. Okay, so we're going to sing a song in both English and Farsi. We're going to sing Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. And before you were born, your great-grandparents learned the song from their parents. Then they sang it to their children and their grandchildren. Now you can sing it to your future children. If you have a song that your family likes to sing, please put the title in the chat now. We'd love to hear from you. So I'm going to sing Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. You can sing along with me. Let's hold up our hands. I'm going to sing it in English first, and then um, Chuka Faye will sing it in Farsi. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Up above the world so high, like a diamond in the sky. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Okay, now Shukafe will sing this for us in Farsi. <clears throat> Let's, before I sing it for you, to tell you about the book, I mean the song, this is something that when I was growing up, we didn't have this song in Iran. But now Iranian children's they have it. But before I sing it for you, when it says, Setare, I setare. Setare means the meaning of that means a star. When it says cheshmak bezandovare means uh, twinkle your eyes. And then kardi dele manoshat means that you made my heart very happy. And taban shodi dovare when you came back again. Should abr pare pare means that the, the clouds had been separated and cheshak pezan setare means that the a star I mean, means twinkle the star. Now I can sing it for you. I hope you like it. Um, setare ay setare cheshmak pezan dobare کردی دل منو شاد تابان شدی 
دوباره شد ابر پاره پاره چشمک بزن دوباره Okay, so now we are going to make a craft with musical notes. This is just a little background on how to read musical notes. Uh, you start with middle C, and then you can go up or down, depending on which, if you're doing the treble clef or the um, other clef. So like C, D, E, B, sorry, C, D, E, F, that's how you go up. Um, one way to remember it is every good boy does fine or face. That's for the top. And then for the bottom, another way to remember this green bears don't fly airplanes or all cows eat grass. Um, when you're looking at the notes, if it's a whole note, it's a circle that's open. That's a whole note. If it's a half note, it's a circle that's open with a line. And a quarter note is a circle that's closed with a line. Now, if you look at this one, it is the music notes for Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. When you are going to starting to make your craft, you can use these notes. Now, the craft we are going to do that is making it with, I am doing it with, did it with the, uh, color paper or you can do it with color pencil and make the notes also in the back of me i made that notes with the googly eye you can use any things you wanted to make it and it would be really really fun and you can actually frame it now Another way to make the craft is you can actually use edible objects, a food that you find around the house. You can use, for example, I used Fruit Loops. Let me put it right there. Yeah, Fruit Loops. I used um, pretzel sticks to make the lines. And I also used um, gumdrops, colored gumdrops, to make the circles. And instead of glue, yeah. I use marshmallow cream. And then you can yeah. use a star or a um, chopstick to put into the marshmallow cream, and you can make it that way. So let me show you what I made. There's a picture of it over, over here, but let me show you what it looks like in real life. So basically, that's what it looks like. Here's the pretzel sticks. Here's the Cheerios. Those are the gumdrops. And over here, we have a whole note. We have a quarter note. We have a half note. And this is what the notes look like when it goes up to the higher range. The stem actually comes down instead of going up. So this is something that you can make and you can eat it while you're making it. You can have a craft and eat it too. So I hope that you enjoy this. Thank you for joining us. And uh, Shikafe will be doing the next program. Yes, well, please stay along. We are going to have the next program. And thank you for joining us. Don't go away. Thank you. Thank you so much, Michelle and Shukafe. Shukafe, yes, she is right. She is going to stay. So um, let's everyone say a big thank you and goodbye to Michelle for sharing that awesome craft. I would love to eat my musical notes. How about you? <laughs> Absolutely. The gumdrops, the gumdrops. Yeah, the pretzels. Oh, I like the pretzels. I'm, I'm all about the marshmallow cream. Mm -hmm. Yes. It made me hungry. <laughs> all I right. am hungry now. Yes, I am so hungry now. Um, all right. So, Shukafe, you're going to stay with us for a demonstration um, about Middle Eastern headdress, a Middle Eastern headdress demonstration that was inspired also by a Dia book discussion book, um, The Proudest Blue a story yes. of hijab and family. And I just wanted to talk to you a little about what also happened earlier this month. Um, what, hold on, let me, let me share something else. When we had this book discussion, we had an amazing patron and an amazing discussion um, with the kids who 
started talking about stories of their own. And I wanna be able to show this picture to people. So bear with me, everyone, while I share my screen. It's a really, it'll be worth it, I promise. Yeah, <laughs> excitement. Yeah, I'm excited. excited, I can't wait to see. <laughs> well, here we go. Um, so this picture, which I am adding right now. Let me make it bigger for everyone. There you go. So this picture was drawn by Shirovi, um, again, one of the participants in the discussion. Um, Shirovi shared how the hijab added beauty and interest to the person wearing it. And this is how Shirovi was inspired by the book and the discussion that we had. And I just thought it was, it was wonderful. Um, how she how Shirovi was able to create that. So good job, Shirovi. Because of that, Shirovi is getting a free book. Um, and yeah, I know. So fun. And um, everyone who's watching, you have the chance to get your free book too. We are going to put the link in the chat and we'll put it back up on the banner. This is what we're going to be sharing with everyone. On and we will have this. Um, not just from today, if you're re-watching the program, um, you can use this link. You can use this link until all the books are gone. And we have a lot. So lots of chances to get free books. All right, everyone, let's go ahead and see how the fabric of the headdresses, how that looks beyond the pages of the book. Shikafe? Yes. About the head covering that in, because you know that there are a lot of reasons people cover their head one because of snow because of the rain because of the wind um, because of when the weather is cold and when you are doing dusting at home you cover your hair or you are covering your hair from the sun damage also, you are doing it for fashion, that you have seen that a lot of those mannequins and those people doing in Runaway, they are doing it a lot of head covering that it is beautiful. But also, there are another reason of the religious, means that different religion, they have different reason and they are covering the hair. I'm not going to go in very detail all of the religion, but because I am Iranian, I was born in Iran, I can talk about head covering in Iran. In Iran, there are, recently I have seen, there are two ways they are covering it. One is with a very long scarf and also long dress. They are going to cover their hair, not showing it when they are go to the public. Something like this. I don't know how to do it, but it is this way, going, covering the hair, not showing anything. The other one that it is more popular in Iran is, we call it chador that it is covered from a head to the toes, to the legs. And also there are places that you can go and purchase. There are some store that you can just buy chador at your size. You can try it on and then do it. And also the fabric normally for going out is dark. It is like black and it is a little bit loose fabric that it stays and cover the whole body. And also you can make it at home, this covering. I am going to show you that I made for a little doll that I had, then it is going to be like a sort of half circle and a little bit over the half circles that I had. And then you put around your head and goes all the way down. I am going to cover the doll I have. 
you can see it, how it is going to stay. The regular one that we are doing it, normally we hold it with our hands that doesn't go away or doesn't, um, when it is windy, it doesn't get out of your head. And then right now I am going to show you If you can see my doll, that it is covered, almost everything, and it is going all the way to the legs. And then it is really a, a little bit hard that if you don't do a clips or making a pins or something in order to make your two hands free, if you are going to purchase something to carry with you or getting in the bus, and all of these things it is really this way and it is easy to make it and covering yourself and we call it chador i hope you liked it this little presentation Thank much Shukafe. we are very thankful that you shared your demonstration with us we're getting all our senoritas back on the screen and so we enjoyed it so much and it comes to show the importance of VIA and to learn about different cultures and how to respectfully learn yes. about them. I really, when I was in Iran going to high school, I really had chador on because my father was very rigid Muslim and always I was having chador to go to school and come back or when I was buying things. And I know that it is a little bit difficult it is good that covering your hair doesn't get sun damage. That's good to know. That's good to know. Thank you so much for all that. Thank Thank you. I learned so much and it's just wonderful to learn about cultures outside of my own and how to understand them better. So thank you. I'm yeah, sure that was something. Shukafe, can I try saying the word and let me know if I'm pronouncing it correctly. Chador. 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 C-H-A-D-O-R. Chador. Chador. Yes, but also different uh, country, they have a different way okay. covering this up. Like in Afghanistan, they are having burqa. Okay. And then in Saudi Arabia, they have a sort of like chador, but they are covering the face also. And you cannot even see the eyes because it is graded fabric. They can see outside but nobody can see your eyes also. But in Iran, it is you can show your face and then covering the rest of the body. And then one more time, Chador. Chador. <laughs> Thank you, Shukata. Yeah. How do you Thank say you. Um, goodbye in Farsi? We say um, Khoda Hafez. Khoda Hafez. Thank yeah. you, Shukata. means that the God would be with you. And you. <laughs> Adios. Adios. All right. Woo. That was very exciting. I learned a lot. And um, we also uh, know how to, I was going to ask Senorita Cayenne to see if she wanted to sing Estrellita in Spain <laughs> for us. But um, Senorita Cayenne, do you want to help me uh, sing little, um, what is it, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star? <laughs> Okay. Uh, you know the beginning of it, Senorita Diane? Why are we singing that now? I'm sorry. <laughs> well, because because of the the what the ladies before they sang it in English and then Farsi. So, but uh, yeah. Okay. Now I'm about to see. Now you're. <laughs> do you want to sing it? I'll help you. I think uh, no. I would think you should sing it all. All of it. All right. I know the first part. It goes estrellita. Donde estás? And what is it? En el cielo y en el mar. Those are the only parts I know that I remember <laughs> today. <laughs> but we did it a, a few story times back, and it's actually one of our favorite songs. So, mm -hmm. all right. So uh, remember, viewers, by watching this event, you have the opportunity to get a book of your own, and we're gonna put the link on screen one more time and in the chat box. And hang on, hang on. Let me find it. I lost. Oh, here it is. Here it is. There. Yes. It is. All right. There you go. Here it is. 
Okay, and then it should be in your chat box. So remember to fill out, you can choose your book. And so now it is my honor to introduce Miss Shirley from the Lincoln Heights Branch Library to present Vietnamese children's songs and stories. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. It's so nice to join everyone today for Dia and celebrating different cultures and traditions. So today I'm going to be sharing some stories and songs in Vietnamese, and they're all about animals. So let's start with some fish for today. And this is the five fish story. And fish in Vietnamese is cá. And let's count how many fish we have on the board right here. Ready? One, two, three, four, five. Five fish. And let's try counting in Vietnamese. Ready? It's mo, hai, ba, bong, nam. Let's try that again. Mo, hai, ba, bong, nam. Nam gong ga, five fish. And let's see what happens to these fishies. And hopefully you'll be able to pick up the numbers. And also we're gonna be learning some colors in Vietnamese with this story. And the story goes like this, so five fish. Five little fish swam until they were sore. And then this fish swam away. What color is this one here? The blue fish swam away, mao sun. Mao Sun, he swam away, and now how many fish are left? We have one, two, three, four. Let's try in Vietnamese. Mo, hai, ba, bong, bong, con cá. Four little fish went into the big sea. Then this one, what color is this one? The red fish, mao đỏ, mao đỏ. The redfish swam away, and now there's only, how many are left? One, two, three. Let's try in Vietnamese. Mo, hai, ba, ba, con cá. Three fish left. Three little fish were looking for their school, and then this one swam away. What color is this one here? Yellow. Yellow is mao vang, mao vang. The yellow one swam away, and now there's only one, two. Mo, hai, hai, con cá. Two little fish were having so much fun, but then the, what color is this? This is purple. Purple is mao tim, mao tim. The purple fish swam away, and now there's only one. In Vietnamese, do you remember? One is mok, mok con cá. One little fish just wanted to be a hero, but then what color was he? Orange, ma cam. The orange one swam away to save a friend, and now there are zero. Zero in Vietnamese is come, come. Hit Garoy, all the fish are gone. So that was our story about the five little fish. So speaking about fish, I wanted to share a song with everyone, um, a traditional children's song that my dad used to sing to me when I was growing up. And it's all about fishing and fishies. <laughs> and in this song, uh, it's a song about a little boy who goes fishing and he brings his net with him. So this is what a net looks like. This is a small one. And net in Vietnamese is ra, ra. He brings his ra, his net, and he sees a crab. So he tries to catch the crab instead. And every time he sees the crab, he says, shh, don't be so loud. It might scurry away. And then as he's going fishing, he sees, what does he see? He sees a bird in the tree. And he has his slingshot with him. Slingshot is ja, sorry, slingshot is na, na. He brings his na and he tries to catch the bird, gong jing. But every time he sees the bird, he says to himself, shh, be quiet. He doesn't want the bird to fly away. And he's trying to catch it. And he tries to catch the bird 
and the crab and the fish so he can bring it home to make some soup. So for his mother to make some soup for him. So kanjua and ragu, fish, uh, fish soup and stew. So in this song, as I'm singing along, I hope that you can imagine seeing the little boy trying to catch the crab with his net right here and also using his slingshot to try to catch the bird so he can bring them both home for his mother to make soup and stew for him. So let's start the song and then I'll open up my piano. So whenever I say shh, I hope you'll follow along and you can also say shh. So the song goes like this. Boys and girls, do you think the bird flew away? And do you think the crab scurried away? Or did the boy catch both of them to bring home for his mother to make soup? So I'm gonna leave that up to you to decide. <laughs> so for the next activity, uh, since we're talking about animals, I have some other animals with me today. I have, let's see, what is this? <gasps> A cat. I have a cat. And cat in Vietnamese is gong mail. Gong mail. And when you think of cats, usually something small comes with them. <gasps> what is this? A mouse. Mouse in Vietnamese is gong chu. Gong chu. And do you notice how big the cat is compared to this teeny tiny mouse? So our next story is called The Great Big Cat and the Teeny Tiny Little Mouse. And in Vietnamese, it's gong mèo lang và gong chu nhỏ siu. Big is lang and tiny, teeny tiny is nhỏ siu. So I will tell you the story in English and in Vietnamese. And boys and girls, you can pretend at home that you're holding on to a cat and a teeny tiny mouse. And you can follow along with the movements. And the story goes like this. There was a great big cat and a teeny tiny little mouse who ran around and around in a tall, tall house until that teeny little mouse finally got caught at last because the great big cat ran around so fast. Poor little mouse. <laughs> well, the cat was just too fast for him. Let's try the story in Vietnamese this time. So you can pretend you're holding onto your cat and your mouse, gong mèo, gong chu, and follow along with the movements. And in Vietnamese, the story goes like this. Có một gong mèo lăng và có một gong chu nhỏ xíu. Hai con chạy và chạy trong một nhà cao và lớn cho đến con chuột nhỏ xíu à, cuối cùng bị bắt tại con mèo lớn chạy nhanh quá nhanh quá he was running too fast <laughs> so that was the story of the great big cat and the teeny little mouse con mèo và con chuột so for our last activity, I wanted to share with them, everyone uh, a special traditional song that a lot of parents sing to their children uh, in Vietnamese. And this song is called The Yellow Butterfly, Ki Gong Boom Vang. And in this song, the children see a yellow butterfly flying high up in the sky. And they're all pointing at the butterfly and they're saying, oh, let's sit down and take a look at that butterfly. 
And butterfly in Vietnamese is boom, boom. And Mao Vang is yellow butterfly. So what do you think, boys and girls? Do you think a butterfly might have small wings? Can you show me what it looks like with small butterfly wings? Like maybe like this. So as I'm singing along, maybe you can flap your little butterfly wings. Or maybe sometimes butterflies have big wings. I don't fit on the screen here. So you can flap your big wings for a big butterfly. And the song goes like this. So I hope you'll be flapping your butterfly wings as I'm singing. Ready? Kia gong boom vang. Kia gong boom vang. Kia gong boom vang. Sa doi gan. Sa doi gan. Boom boom by lin chen chai. Boom boom by lin chen chai. Em ngoi sen. Em ngoi sen. So that was the yellow butterfly. I hope all of you got to learn a little bit of Vietnamese, some counting and some colors, and enjoyed some of our traditional Vietnamese children's songs. And I hope everyone else will enjoy the rest of our Dia celebration today. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Miss Shirley, I have a request. Yes. Could you do the great big cat and the teeny Lilo mouse again so we can follow along and I'll do it too? Yes. I'll just bring it in the Should background. I, yes. <laughs> Should I do it in Vietnamese or in English? Um, uh, both. Both. Okay. <laughs> so let's start with English first. So let's have our big, great big cat and our teeny little mouse. And it goes like this. Uh, actually, let me take my notes. <laughs> Ready? There was a great big cat and a teeny little mouse who ran around and around a tall, tall house until that teeny little mouse finally got caught at last because the great big cat was running so fast. <laughs> and now let's try that in Vietnamese. So it's the same movements. We have gong meo lung and gong chut nhỏ siu. And it goes like this. Gong mo gong meo lung và gong mo và mo gong chut nhỏ siu. Hai gong chạy và chạy trong nhà cao và lớn cho đến gong chut nhỏ siu cuối cùng bị bắt. Tại con mèo lớn, chạy nhanh quá. He was too fast for that mouse. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, Miss Shirley. That was great. Thank you. Thank I think you. I hear a little bird. Do you have a little bird? Oh, I actually have my window open. And we've been hearing birds like morning all day. So I really love it. So maybe I the bird got away from the song. <laughs> the bird got away from the cat. The bird got away from yes. the cat. Yes. <laughs> Yay. I want to practice you. teeny tiny. Is it nyao soup? Nyao soup? Oh, nyao soup. Nyao soup. Nyao soup. And you can also say, yeah, lung is big. Lung. 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 You can also say, siu siu for the small mouse. Siu siu. Siu siu. I like that. Siu siu. Good job. Siu siu. Siu siu. I love Miss Shirley. Love that was great. Thank, Thank you, Miss Shirley. That was great. Thank, Thank you, Miss Shirley. That was so good. Thanks, Miss Shirley, for sharing your cultural songs and traditions with us. This is definitely what Dia is all about. The importance of literacy for all children from all backgrounds. So mm -hmm. please, when we reopen, you can go visit Miss Shirley at Lincoln Heights Branch. Her story times are so fun. I've been to them. They're so fun. Actually, okay. her live story times are great, and when we're able to do that. But Miss Shirley is very um, a very frequent contributor to our morning story times that mm -hmm. we have every weekdays at 10 a.m. She does bilingual Vietnamese story times as well, and. Wednesday afternoon, sometimes you'll catch her um, for language immersion. So story time all in Vietnamese. She is wonderful. And all from her story times, I've really learned a lot. I know the I know the butterfly song now. <laughs> and I'm so proud that I was able to learn it from the library and from Miss Shirley. It's so great. So now That's you're um, bilingual? Or oh. trilingual. <laughs> very, very she knows little. a little bit of Spanish too, Miss Joanna. And she knows lie. a little Tagala, right? Don't you know a little Tagala? A little too? bit. 
a little bit. Yeah. I know. And that, you know, Maya. that'll be perfect for summer reading because we have all the languages and they'll be available at the LAPL.org forward slash summer. And you'll be able to <gasps> click the link and pull up your language that you want to Spanish. You mean this link right there? <gasps> that link that right link. there. <laughs> LAPL.org forward slash summer. And look, when, I mean, I just love all the languages. I mean, beautiful. Oh, when does what language languages do we have? We have, okay, let's count them. One, okay. that's Japanese. Two, Russian. Mm -hmm. Three, I think this one's Korean. Four, I think this is Farsi. Ooh. Spanish. I might be missing one. I think the Korean one is coming. Maybe that was the other one. I sh I don't know. There's just so many. We have so many languages in Los Angeles. So you need that, Diane. I want to hear from all of the the people watching what languages you speak at home. What what language will you sign up for summer reading? Oh, in? Yeah. And yeah. when does it start? Yeah. When can we sign up? I'm ready. June seventh. Wow. June. Seventh. It's right it around the corner. It's right around the corner, and you can pre-register in May. So, so oh. Diane, do you, is this something that I can do on my phone if I can't make it to one of the libraries? Yes, you can sign up via Beanstack mm -hmm. and do it and just log on on your phone. Let me go so, ahead and pre-register. Yeah. You know what? I have some one of the grand prizes. You guys get to see it first. Ooh. You can win one of these bandanas, this lovely wow. one. Wow. Wow. Or this lovely one. What? what what's what is the picture of it? Is it the library? This picture is, oh. this artwork is by Jose oh. Ramirez, a local That's artist amazing. who's also a LAUSD teacher, third grade teacher. And there actually is the library. Let me find that there's a little library. There's oh. a library. There's some biodiversity Beautiful. and there's the cityscape. Cool. And there's some other really cool prizes too. It's just gonna be amazing. And books, we're gonna be giving books away. So we have someone that shared in the chat that their languages that they speak are English and Armenian. They're bilingual. Yay. Yay. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess we uh, remember viewers by watching this event, you have the opportunity to get a free book of your own. Mm -hmm. Just follow the link that Miss Joanna and uh, keeps posting in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> And follow the link on That's the screen. That's what it looks like. <laughs> and you get to uh, select the book that you'd like. Now, uh, for our next presenter, are you guys ready? Are you ready? It's yeah, ready. Ms. Mona from the Northridge Branch Library, and she's going to be Yay. showing us the more poetic side to Dia. Oh Yay. my goodness! Yay. Yay. The last day is National Poetry Month too. Is it the last day? Yes, it was the last, last day. day of National Poetry Month. Hi, Ms. What a way to end it the month. The last right. day. I just realized it. We just got it in. <laughs> All right, Perfect. Mona, Perfect we timing. can't wait. Take it away. Hi, everybody. My name is Miss Mona, and I'm from the Northridge Branch Library. And I'm having so much fun at this DS celebration. You know, there are all kinds of collectors out there, people that collect rocks, people that collect dolls, people that collect words, words. Oh my, this book, Book Joy, Word Joy, Poems by Pat Mora, has a poem in it called Word Collector. And I'm gonna share that with you. Collecting words. All day I collect words, words that move like wiggle, glowing words like candle, drifting words like butterfly, singing words, ding dong. I collect words that make me smile like tiny that fill my mouth, Bumble and bumblebee that float along river that have a brown scent, cinnamon that sweetly stretch, caramel. I collect short, hard words like brick, soft words like lullaby, cozy words like snug, funny words like rambunctious, that's a funny word, jumpy words like hiccup, and big words.
words, onomatopoeia. Oink, oink. I whisper, I say, shout, write, and sing my words. What words will you collect today? You know, when you are a word collector, you can be a poet. But what exactly is poetry? When I was little, I really didn't know what poetry was. And now that I'm grown up, I found a book called Daniel Finds a Poem by Misha Archer. And this book inspired me to write my own version of Daniel Finds a Poem. So I'm going to share with you my story. This is Daniel. Here he is. Now Daniel goes to the park every day with his abuela. And Daniel knows all the things in the park. He knows, I'm gonna show you closer so you can see. He knows the park bench. He knows the trees. He knows the, the lamp that lights the park at night when his abuelo takes him. He is very familiar with all of that. He knows the recycle bin where he can throw his trash. He knows the two, he knows the two girls that come and read with their mother at the park. But one day on a Monday, Daniel went to the park and he saw something he didn't know. He saw a sign that said poetry in the park. I'll show you close. Poetry in the park on Sunday. And Daniel thought to himself, what is poetry? So he looked up and there happened to be a spider. And the spider told him why poetry is spinning my web. And Daniel thought, that's brilliant. I'm going to remember that. And then the spider was gone. Then the next day was Tuesday. And Daniel saw a squirrel. And he asked the squirrel, squirrel, what? does poetry mean to you? And the squirrel said, well, poetry is when fall leaves crunch on the ground. And Daniel said, that is wonderful. I'm going to remember that. Then on Wednesday, Daniel saw, you know what that is? Can you tell? What is that? That's a chipmunk. He saw the chipmunk and he asked the chipmunk, what does poetry mean to you? And the chipmunk said, well, poetry is a cozy home. Then on Thursday, Daniel saw, he went to the pond and he saw a frog. And he asked the frog, what does poetry mean to you, frog? And the frog said, why, poetry is a wonderful pond. And with that, the frog jumped in. And then, oh my, the next day, he saw a turtle. And it's now Friday. And he asked the turtle what poetry meant to him. And the turtle said, why, it's the warmth of the sun on my shell. And then on Saturday, Daniel saw a cricket. And he asked the cricket, what does poetry mean to you, cricket? 
And the cricket said, when singing when the day is done, Daniel, that's what it means to me. And finally, he saw that night when he was going to sleep, an owl. And he asked the owl, what does poetry mean to you? And the owl said, why poetry is bright stars, moonlight on the ground, and large wings to take me wherever I go. Good night, Daniel. Well, that night, Daniel laid in his bed and he thought and he thought and he thought about all the things that his friends had told him. And when it was time for poetry in the park, Daniel was ready. And Daniel's poem went like this, and he said it to all of you. Spinning my web, fall leaves crunch on the ground, having a cozy home, a wonderful pond, warmth of the sun on my shell, singing when the day is done, bright stars, moonlight on the grass, and large wings to take me wherever I go. Daniel now wants to know, what is poetry to you? And don't forget, if you want to see the version by Micah Archer, you can get this book through our Overdrive, or you can get it in our regular library catalog. I hope you had fun and learning poetry, what it is with Daniel. Thank you. That was great. Um, yay, Mona. Yay. Thank you so much, Miss Mona. That was so good. I love the poem. Um, and remember, everybody at home, that you can sign up to get that book. Uh, Miss Joanne will post the link in the chat, and she'll post it down here in just a second. So make sure you sign up and pick your books. Uh, oh, Miss Mona, do you have a favorite book? Oh, oh, I just wanted to make sure. So in the chat right now, I put in the link so people can check out both Book Joy, Word Joy, or Daniel Finds a Poem. And now I'm going to put for your choice of free book. This is what Sally was talking about. Yeah. And, <laughs> and now I'm going to go ahead and put um, the link into the chat. So you can just click on that link pick out your book, submit the pro the form, and then we will work on getting that book to your closest library to go hub or um, branch that is open next week for limited service. Very exciting. Yay. Very exciting. <laughs> Thank you again, Mona. Thank Actually, you. Mona, we will see again for our finale puppet show. So everyone get excited. Yeah. That. I know that's show. in store for us. All right. See you then, Mona. <laughs> Bye, Bye, Mona. Mona. Bye, Mona. Uh, so what did you guys think about the poems? I love I really, poems. Yeah. I really mm -hmm. liked knowing uh, the turtle one when Daniel asked the turtle. What is it? The sun on my shell. Ugh, I cried. It's my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that was beautiful. Um, so at home, you can even, if you feel inspired, make sure to write your own poems as well mm -hmm. when you sign up for your books. Um, so now we are going to go to the Watts branch staff uh, with Miss Salam, and she's going to talk to us about Ethiopian New Year. Hi, Miss Salam. Hi. 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 Salam. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? We are great. <laughs> All right. I'm Gracie, me... just like them. <laughs> so. <laughs> Let me pull up um, the pictures we have for your part of our presentation. I'm so excited for this. Too. I love your shirt. I love your shirt, Salam. It's so Thank pretty. You. Thank you. I will dress. Wow. <laughs> it's beautiful. Beautiful. It matches our colors. Yes. I like right. it. <laughs> All right. Let's see. I think I have it, everyone. Um, there we go. Oh, that's beautiful. Thank you. That's wonderful. So I know, um, you know, celebrating New Year's for us is always really exciting. And for me, you know, I love to stay up until midnight and, and um, wish everybody a happy New Year and celebrate. Uh, and I know one time we were, oh, hi, Miss Charlene. Yeah, she's here. Hi. 
just wanted to come in and say hi. I'm glad you guys are, are already started, but go ahead. <laughs> uh, I'm just uh, introducing a little bit about what we're going to talk about, but um, go ahead and jump in um, after I finish. So we're going to talk about um, Ms. Salam's uh, experiences celebrating Ethiopian, Ethiopian New Year in Little Ethiopia here in Los Angeles. So I know her and Ms. Charlene have talked a lot about it, and I am so excited to learn more about these traditions. So take it away, ladies. Thank you. Yeah. Hi. So, <laughs> I missed the first part of it, but I was saying I love New Year's because I always stay up till midnight and watch fireworks and everything. And so how is it that you celebrate New Year's in Ethiopia? Uh, we celebrating uh, September 11. You know, just like I told you, our days, uh, 12 hours, our night is 12 hours. We don't need to wake up in the middle of night. We just we celebrate in Eve and in the the new year, the new year. Oh, in the evening, like when the sun sets. Yes. Oh, wow! And then, like, there's this beautiful picture of fire. Do you do you have fireworks like we do that explode in the sky, or do they are the different kind of fire that you have? New Year is a very festive uh, occasion in the New Year Eve night. Torches of dry leaves and wood bundle in the form of tall and tick stick are also set up on the fire in front of the house. Uh, each, wow. household, each household or neighbors in the group light wooden torch called Chibbo. They symbolize the coming of the new season of sunshine. Oh, yeah. so of course in Southern California, you couldn't have giant fireflies <laughs> in September. <laughs> September is the end of summer in Southern California. So, like, how could you possibly have a giant fire when everything's so dry? Is it the same there? Like, how come it's okay to have fires? Yeah, it's hard. Just like sunshine is coming. Uh, is I remember while I was uh, in the New Year in Kutatash, in special day, uh, a lot of, sorry, in the new year months, the end of three months, rainy season. The oh. end of three months, in rainy season, when bright autumn days return, the yellow uh, flowers is growing everywhere and it's, it's beautiful. It's not drying. Just everything is green and flower and everywhere is beautiful. Wow, that's amazing. So that's why it's green enough that it, it isn't as scary if you have these giant fires. It's different. <laughs> it's different. And then um, you were saying that that's what they do at night, but do you do something different during the day? Yeah, in, in, in the morning, just like I told you, it's a kid's time. Uh, in the new year, it's in Kutatash special day for the children. They gather together in the group and go from house to house. Girls play the song, Avavayo meaning I have seen flowers with uh, hand drums while boys often present this picture painted by themselves with expectation of praise and gifts. Just wow. like in the picture. I think you were saying when you're a girl, you go with a big group of friends, right? Or is it your sisters? Who do you go with? You go with a group, right? Like yes, I go to my, like, in, in the same age, you have a lot of neighbors. In the same age, you're going together. Uh, like, would you have gone to school with them? Like your classmates or no, just it's your neighbors? neighbors? Around the, ho the house in the neighborhood. Maybe if you somebody living with you, like if you have cousins, if you have some um, closest near near your sister or oh, cool. in the group. Yeah. So did you have a fun time doing that every year? Did you remember anything about doing that when you, did you have any friends that you went with all the time or did you have sisters? Yes, I remember I, uh, in Ethiopia, uh, kids going together, playing together. It's open area. It's oh. like close, kids, they know each other, the kids. And I remember I go to work with my neighbors and I play song and the neighbors give us money. And I remember uh, I buy sweet candy from the store. Oh, 
I was going to say, that's all even better than trick-or-treating because instead of just getting candy, you get money. You can yes. do whatever you want. Yes. And it's you end up buying money. candy, too. Yeah, you <laughs> money. That's yeah. cool. And then the boy, he's giving away pictures? Is that what he's doing? Yeah, they're drawing picture and they give away for neighbors. They knock the door and they give, and then they will praise them or give them treat money. Ah. Well, that's really nice. The children making money in the new year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? It's yes. going to be a good new year prosperous. Yes. <laughs> they love yeah. that new year. They love that their special day. Cool. And I think then we have some pictures of the flowers that you were talking about, right? Is there another picture of the flowers? Yes. What does it say down there at the bottom? Oh, it just said yes. Happy New Year. It, it's a, the... the Flower in the bottom, the kids, the boys drawing, is wishing for the new year, is successful, blessing, and healthier, and they wishing for the neighbors give when they give him more. It's just like postcard. How would you say it? How would you say the words that are the way they're written there? Uh, welcome at this Ahmed. Oh, <laughs> that's nice. Welcome at this Ahmed. Yes. <laughs> kind of. Not as good yes. as you. <laughs> I know it's a little bit harder. Okay, back to it. So there was another picture of the flowers, the real flowers. Yes. Everywhere wow. when the new year almost closed, the flower is coming. If you see this picture, you, you know, every Ethiopian people notice that the new year flower. Oh. Yes. It's beautiful. Yes. Like here, it's in springtime, but there it's almost at the end of summer. Yes, but then you see uh, the wild everywhere, the jungle everywhere, the flower is growing. That's so beautiful. Yes. Um, and I think uh, so. Back to your nighttime celebration, uh, you were telling me about how a lot of different uh, people gather together. So. What is what is this that they're doing here? Uh, the neighbors, when gathering in the eve, when they're making big fire, they they eating together. They have a lot of different type of food. They have a lot of different music. They eating, they drinking, and everybody try to dance and try to sing different type of song because we have seventeen different tribe and language and culture and music everybody try some some uh, experience as a oh wow so you learn a lot i mean yeah. kind of fun learn <laughs> like, it's fun like i'm trying to say happy new year like <laughs> why you sitting in the house you hear a lot of music everywhere everywhere just like big party in in and they're in cooking the are they cooking or are they just eating on a platter what would they be eating there uh, most of the time, they're eating sheep, the cats, and they can like campfire. They're cooking the meat over there, they're drinking. Oh, yeah. The time is holiday food is meat over there. Oh. Yes. So there's a lot of meat that you're when eating. Everybody... Is there a sauce that they're dipping it in? In the center? It's barely yellow. Do they, is there sauces that you have? They have hot, spicy. And they have different type of spice. Yeah, I've had, I've seen all the food in Little Ethiopia here, and my um, grandkids and my daughter really love Ethiopian food, but I've never gone. <laughs> I yeah, need to go, right? So this year, yeah. this year in September, I'll go yes, <laughs> celebrate yes. New Year's that way. Yeah. Try and try and eat some Ethiopian food. But I've seen the flatbread, right? There's a flatbread. Yes, that's calling injera. Injera. Yes, that's the healthy food. And so in the nighttime, that's some, uh, even though you sing the songs as kids in the daytime, and then at nighttime, you guys sing the same songs or different songs? Different type of song. New Year song and every love song or everything about the New Year wish. They have a lot of music. Wherever is like hot music, help them to dance and they play whenever they want. Wow. Yes. You're wearing a really beautiful outfit. Is it? Uh, is there some kind of 
special outfit you wear on New Year's? Yes, this is Ethiopian cultural clothes. Everybody wearing like this in holiday. They're made by hand. And just like that. this is, that's why I wear and they make their hair like this. This is Ethiopian hairstyle. Oh, it's pretty. It's got a lot pretty. of jewels or something in it, huh? Your, uh, yes, they, they, they did a lot of things and earring everything. That's oh, wow, gold. So the is the white important? Or yeah. no? Just there's a lot of white because it's a festive color. It's a white, but the design is different. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, the, the design is the more important. Yes. That's the hem. I, like it's embroidered or something. Yes. Well, do, do you have a song that you can sing for us so we can feel like we're there at New Year's with you? Yes, I'm ready to sing. <laughs> I know that they had drums. Um, at, the little girls had drums. So do you have a drum or are you going to... Oh, yay! I want to see. They're made from animal uh, uh, skin. Let me see. Pick it up again. I want to see it. It's so cool. Oh my God! It's giant. It's big. I can't find the small one. And then. I'll oh no! It. But it's beautiful. I love it. It's really nice. Yes. It's like that. All those uh, pulled the strings pulled down. Yes. And I'm ready. <laughs> okay. Let me hear. I want to hear you. If you guys ready to sing with me, I'm trying. <laughs> I don't know.
That was amazing. Uh, it was a beautiful song. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Charlene and Salam. It was an honor to learn about Ethiopia New Year and just all across, you know, the differences between New Year's and cultures and how we all celebrate them. So it was beautiful. I love the song. I enjoyed it so much. What'd you all think? Thank you. I was just moving like this the whole time. <laughs> I know. Lots of dancing in the background. Yeah, I loved it. And the whole presentation was great. I love I loved learning about how you celebrate New Year's. I'm even ready. I've got my party hat for New Year's. Ready. Wow. <laughs> she is ready. Yeah. Thank you, God. And all the music, the loudness. Yes, it was great. Thank you so much. Um, so we also have another holiday that one of our young patrons shared with us. Roshan, who turned five years old and his mother had participated in the first Dia book discussion where they shared their family tradition of celebrating Onam. Um, so Onam is a harvest festival celebrated in Q Q Kerala, a southern state in India. So here is Roshan celebrating uh, in front of in front of Pukalam, which is a floral decoration made by kids in front of homes during Onam Festival. So that is beautiful. Thank you, Roshan so and pretty. mom. I think Roshan and his mom also might be watching right wow. now. So thank you oh, yes. for sharing your story. It was so your pictures. Oh wow! Look at the different like florals, like on the ground, like zooming in. <laughs> I know. I know. I'm trying to. I'm trying I'm to you're just right. Make it bigger. Oh. I know. Um, so it's beautiful. Thank you so much. Um, so I'm excited to share that Roshan is getting his choice of, of a free book by sharing his story. Is that Roshan too? That is Roshan. That's Roshan too. But I, I, you know what? Here, let, we can go back to the first picture. Right. <laughs> so all the email users, you too, you yes. can too um, get your free book. So by visiting the link, which Miss Joanna will share mm -hmm. on the screen. There you go. And also put in the chat, you can also receive your free book. So we have one final picture of Roshan and she, Ms. Joanna is gonna share it one more yes. time. Here, Here he is oh. having Onam okay. Sadia on a banana leaf, which traditionally has around 24 vegetarian dishes. Wow. I know. Yummy, oh my yummy. So we have I know. the hunger part of our program today. Oh man, so uh, I'm getting hungry. I know, I think, uh, speaking about food and speaking of food traditions, uh, we have an exciting program coming up right now. So um, is that correct? Are you all? We do, we do. Let, let's right. find her, let's get her on the screen. Let's get, I think it's Miss Jennifer, she's back. Hi, I'm back. Hi, 
<laughs> Yay. So take it away, Miss Jennifer. Show us what you will be cooking. Yeah. All right. Thank you. All right. So um, if you have been watching this whole program, thank you for sticking around. I did tell a story earlier. If you've joined us later, I am Jennifer from the Palms Ranch and Park Branch, though I'm obviously not there right now. Welcome to my kitchen. <laughs> and I am making myself um, a rather early dinner right now. And I'm going to make some ramen. Um, hopefully all of you have had some ramen before. If you haven't, you need to check it out. We're, we live in Los Angeles. You can get ramen all over the place. It's delicious. It is a Japanese soup that has noodles, a tasty broth, some vegetables, and then there's usually some meat or an egg in it. Today, I am going to make instant ramen, which we can find. Um, people eat instant ramen all over the world. And why am I making instant ramen? Because I was reading this book, which is from the DIA book list, lapl.org slash DIA, and you can check this out. This is Magic Ramen. The story of Momofuku Ando by Andrea Wang. And it is about the inventor of instant ramen. And it's actually a really great story about a scientist because Ando san had to try and fail and try and fail and try and try again until he finally got instant ramen right. And now we eat it all over the world. Um, I'm going to make it in a moment, but I actually am going to add some vegetables to it. And I need to get my vegetables started. I'm going to do a little cooking. So, um, so all you parents out there, this is obviously something that requires adult supervision because I have some things going on in the oven over here. I'll show you in a moment. Um, or on the stove, I should say, but there are so many ways to bring kids into the kitchen because preparing food together and even just talking about what you're doing and then eating together is such a great way to bond and to develop some new skills. So I have some mushrooms here, though um, I didn't even have to cut these. I got them from the grocery store pre-cut. <laughs> so these are actually going to go over here <laughs> on my oven where I already have some oil heating up. And I'm going to put those in there so they can start cooking. <laughs> and then let's talk about ramen. So let me come back here. So let me get my instant ramen here. So instant ramen is really fun. If you've never made it before, I recommend it just for the, because it's fun. I mean, here, here it is. It starts out as a hard block of noodles. It's just these noodles and a little packet of flavoring. So of course, when we do something like this, I mean, even if you're just microwaving something, you can uh, have kids set the timer or check the clock. You can read the instructions because that's very important. So I'm going to read the instructions on here right now. You got to do that before you start. In a small pot, boil 500 milliliters of water. Add noodles, cook for three minutes, stir occasionally. And then after that, remove from heat, add soup and seasoning from the packet and stir well. And then it says, try adding an egg, vegetables, or meat as desired. I'm gonna add some vegetables as I already shared. In fact, if you read the uh, nutrition facts on here, okay, you guys, instant ramen is really fun to make and it's really tasty, but it's probably not something you wanna eat all the time. <laughs> Actually, if you can make fresh ramen, you can make it a lot healthier. So you'll see there's not a lot of vitamins in here. So you probably wanna add something and you know, when you have a dish like this with lots of different flavors, it's a great way to try new vegetables. I'm actually a very picky eater myself, so it's nice to mix things together. All right, so I am already, I already have my 500 milliliters of water boiling here. I used my measuring cup. It has a line on it that actually says 500 milliliters, so I filled the water up to that line, poured it in the pot, turned the stove on and it is boiling away. So let's add our noodles in there. This is the part where it becomes magic ramen because it starts out hard and dry. And after it's time in the water, it's going to be soft and delicious and we can eat it. And I'm going to look at the clock. 
Okay, so what am I going to add to my ramen? Let's see. Well, you already know I have mushrooms, which is not a vegetable. It's a fungi. I'm going to add green onions. And here's some green onions uncut, but I already chopped some up. And the great thing about the green onions is I don't have to cook them. I'm just going to put them right on the ramen when it's done. I also have some sugar snap peas. Also don't need to cook these. They're going to go right on the ramen when it's done. And I have some bell peppers. Not something you normally find on ramen, but you know what? I love bright, beautiful colors in my food. And I love bell peppers. So I already cut them up. Some bell peppers. And I'm going to put those on the ramen too. In fact, I'm going to put them in the pan to cook with the mushrooms for a few minutes. And for a little bit more flavor, how about some garlic? Garlic is also really easy. I just buy the minced garlic. The grocery store comes in a jar. All I have to do is scoop it out. I'm going to put that in the pan. Mm -hmm. that way. So let's see. So Momofuku Ando, why did he invent instant ramen? Well, we have to go back to the 1940s after World War II in Japan. And Ando-san saw a lot of his people after a big war were poor. A lot of people had their homes destroyed. And he saw them waiting in the cold, lined up to buy bowls of ramen from street vendors because they couldn't cook a nice meal in their home. And he wanted to create something that was easy to make in the home and everyone could enjoy together. Stir my noodles, I forgot to do that. Oh, they're getting really soft. We'll see them in a minute. Okay. And Let's see. Yeah, so Ando-san worked for many years until he invented Instant Ramen, and now it is actually something that people can enjoy all over the world together or alone, as I'm going to eat mine alone today. <laughs> Hopefully you guys will be eating dinner with someone tonight. All right. You know what? It has been three minutes, so our noodles are ready to cook. I'm going to move these onions out of the way. I have a clear bowl so we can see it going. I'm going to turn off the water. Stir up my vegetables one more time. Those are looking good. Get my hot pad. And pour into the bowl. Woo. All right. Noodles in water. <laughs> it's not quite ramen yet. <laughs> we need to make it soup. So here's our little packet of flavoring. Pour that in. Stir it up a little. And voila! Suddenly, it's soup. <laughs> All right. So you could actually just eat this on its own. But of course, we want to add a little more, a little more flavor, make it look really pretty. I'm turning off the stove because my vegetables are done. Got to remember to turn everything off. All right. So let's add some green onions right in, right into the soup. And I'm going to add some sugar snap peas. Sugar snap peas and look at that. I've got the bell peppers, I've got the mushrooms. Right into my ramen. You know, one of the nice things about making ramen is to make it look really pretty. And I'm afraid that I didn't quite do that with all my vegetables mixed up. But if you are having vegetables that you've cooked separately, if you've taken a little more time than I have today, 
it's really fun to be able to arrange them and make them look nice. I need some more green onions because that adds some great flavor. But there we go. There is some ramen with lots of healthy vegetables in it. Or, or fruit, actually. You know, bell peppers are fruit. And how do we eat that? Well, we need some chopsticks. And we need a soup spoon. Now, a traditional Japanese soup spoon is actually really deep, which makes sense. If you're eating soup, you probably want something deeper, but I don't have one of those. So I'm using the spoon from my silverware. And then I'm going to get some of the noodles. Get them up here on the spoon. And ramen is also fun to eat because it's really messy. So you got to slurp it up. Hopefully it's not too hot. <laughs> Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> oh, it's so good. Oh. Mmm. So, you guys, I hope you have something delicious for dinner tonight. You know, it's really fun. You know, there are noodle dishes from all over the world. We've got ramen from Japan and lots of other ones. We've got uh, pho from Vietnam. It's a lot of pho places all over Los Angeles. And of course, Italy is full of pasta like spaghetti and linguine, which a lot of us are familiar with. <sighs> Let's see, there's even German noodles called Spetzel. Uh, I've seen those at the grocery store, German egg noodles. So I might try those sometimes because you can just put in whatever you want with them. It's fantastic and try some new flavors or find some recipes and try something that's actually from a new culture and eat your way through a new culture. I'm going to go eat now. And I think we have. Miss okay. Jen, I, I need some. Where, where <laughs> you guys are, are ready, ready huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, you have to deliver okay, them now. I'll, I'll be by. I'm going to have to get in my car and drive around. <laughs> yes, please. Yes, please. Oh, yeah. No. Yeah, I grew up eating fideo. That's what we ate in, you know, Mexico is fideo noodles mm, with queso. Mm. Oh, but I'll take, I'll take some ramen. I'll drive by later, Jen. <laughs> I love queso with anything. <laughs> this is true. We loved it. Thank you, Jen, for feeding us with a good book and a good bowl of ramen. Really right. loved it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yes. Um, I'm, I'm very hungry now, but we have still a little bit more of our celebration and then we can, um, and then I can eat. So I'm, excited <laughs> <about that. laughs> so, uh, I'm so glad um, Jennifer brought up the books. Books are such a huge part of Dia. Um, and so is community, which is why we are so happy to partner with First Five LA for our Dia celebration. They've actually been a huge supporter of Dia throughout the state. And what First Five LA is about is about strengthening families so that all children in LA County um, enter kindergarten ready to succeed in school and in life. And furthermore, First Five LA is helping the library welcome back all our patrons at select branches that are open for in-person service next week and our library to go hubs by providing us with free books to give to families with young children. So here to share that book and give a sneak peek to everyone of what you'll be getting when you visit the libraries next week. We have Mr. Kevin. Hi, Hi Mr. Kevin. Thanks for having me. Kevin. So glad so to be happy here. happy to have you, Mr. Kevin. Yeah, so thank you. Let, let me go ahead and get you on to the screen. I got our book. Um, so yeah, today I want to read everyone a book. It's called Potter the Otter, A Tale About Water. Um, in, in Espanol, it's The Nutria of Potter, Un Cuento Acerca del Agua. And um, yeah, let's, let's get started. Once upon a time, there was a little otter. His name was Potter, and he loved to drink water. Había una vez una pequeña nutria Su nombre era Potter, y a él le encantaba beber agua. Mm. 
Mama and Papa Otter would say, Potter, drink water every day. Drink water for thirst, and you should know, water is healthy, it helps you grow. Mama y Papa nutria la decían, Potter, bebe agua cada día, bebe agua para la sed, y tú deberías saber, el agua es saludable, te, ayuda, te ayudaba a cre crecer. Potter loves water. This is true. He wants his friends to love water too. Let's go on a picnic, he said one day. We can teach my friends about water along the way. A Potter le gusta el agua. Esto es verdad. El quiere que sus amigos disfruten del agua también. Vamos a un día de campo. El dijo un día. Podemos enseñarle a mis amigos sobre el agua a lo largo del camino. First, they spotted Toda, who was drinking soda. Potter said, no soda, Toda. It has sugar, which, is, which your teeth don't need. Water is best for you, indeed. Primero vieron a Toda, quien estaba bebiendo soda. Potter le dijo, nada de soda, Toda. Tiene azúcar, lo, la cual tus, tus dientes no necesitan. El agua de seguro es mejor para ti. Drink water for thirst, and you should know water is, water is healthy. It helps you grow. Beben agua pa para la sed, y ustedes deberían saber, el agua es saludable, les ayuda a crecer. Next, they found Goose drinking juice with Moose. Potter said, silly Goose and Moose, throw away that juice. You must be thirsty after you play, but drinking water is the best way. Después encontraron a Goose bebiendo jugo con Moose. Potter les dijo, Goose y Moose, tiren ese jugo. Deben tener sed después de la jugadera, pero agua es la mejor manera. Drink water for thirst and you should know, water is healthy, it helps you grow. Beben agua para la sed y ustedes deberían saber, el agua es saludable, les ayuda a crecer. Across the bridge were three skunks in a bunch who were laughing and playing while drinking their punch. Potter said, the sugar and punch might taste yummy, but it, you could end up with too big of a tummy. Al otro lado del puente habían tres sordillos en un grupo quienes estaban riendo y jugando mientras bebían su ponche. Potter les dijo, el azúcar en el ponche puede tener un sabor Delicioso, pero puedes terminar con un, una pancita muy grande. Drink water for thirst and you should know, water is healthy, it helps you grow. Beben agua para la sed y ustedes deberían saber, el agua es saludable, les ayuda a crecer. In their mama's pouches, they found baby kangaroo, who popped out their heads while yelling, boo! Potter said, put down those juice pouches. They're sugary sweet. Your body needs water from your head to your feet. En las pancitas de sus madres encontraron pequeños kangaroos quienes sacaron sus cabezas mientras decían, boo. Potter les dijo, dejen esas bolsitas de jugo, son dulce acercado. Tu cuerpo necesita agua desde la, desde la cabeza hasta los pies. Drink water for thirst, and you should know, water is healthy, it helps you grow. Beben agua para la sed, y ustedes deberían saber, el agua saludable les ayuda a crecer. After listening to Potter tell the, teach them about water, Toda stopped wanting soda, Goose and Moose gave up their juice, Skunks in a Bunch don't drink punch, and no more juice pouches for little kangaroos, because instead, they now know what to do. Luego de escuchar a Potter enseñándole sobre el agua, Toda dejó de querer soda. Mus y mus denunciaron a su jugo. Los orillos en grupo no toman ponche. Y lo más bolsitas de jugo para los pequeños canguros, porque ahora ellos saben qué hacer.
Everyone felt happy as can be as they cheered, water is best for me. Drink water for thirst and you should know, water is healthy, it helps you grow. Cada uno se siento tan feliz y sano como pudo estar y juntos gritaron, el agua es lo mejor para mí. Bebe agua para la sed y debería saber, el agua es saludable, te ayuda a crecer. And that's the end of our book. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kevin. Muchas gracias, Señor Kevin. Uh, el libro nos encantó tanto. It's a great book. I love the story. I love drinking water. And the potter is so cute. I'm sorry, the otter is so cute. <laughs> potter, the otter, the potter? Potter, yeah. the potter. <laughs> potter. Uh, I'm going to put a link for everyone so that you can see there are more adventures of Potter the Otter right yeah, there. There's, yeah, there's free books you can download. Mm -hmm. There's other supplemental activities that you can do, um, worksheets you can print out. Um, so, And you'll be able, obviously, to find it at your library when you guys open up next week for a little bit. So that's so exciting. Yeah, that's yes. really so remember, families, that you can get a copy of your own uh, Potter the Otter uh, at Library to Go Hubs or at branches that are opening for limited time, limited in-person services starting next week. Uh, and if you'd like to continue celebrating Dia with a book of your choice, please visit the link on the screen and in the chat to fill out our Dia form that we've been uh, promoting all program long. Um, so si gustan, uh, quieren agarrar un libro el que leo mi señor uh, Kevin, pueden recogerlo la semana que entra en las bibliotecas Library to Go o las sucursales que van a abrir um, la semana que entra. So remember that the books are all available while supplies last and pick up will be at the Library to Go hubs and at branches opening for limited in-person service next week. Woohoo! I will you. put the link up. Um, but first, I just wanted to also share that if parents wanted more information about First Five LA, there's the website to go to. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Work. Thank you so much for having me. It was great <laughs> it was, to meet all of you. Yes. And then we'll probably, yeah, we may see you again. Probably yeah. in the story time very <laughs> soon. Maybe Tuesday. I yeah, don't maybe know. Tuesday. <laughs> All right, everyone. Thank you again, Mr. Kevin. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Yeah, Mr. Kevin. Oh, oh, my goodness. So much fun. All right. Um, I'm going to work on, again, there is the form if you like typing things in. <laughs> and then let me go ahead. I will cut and paste everyone and put the link on the chat. So it is actually pretty recent um, if you scroll back up. But um, I will continue to put that on because yes, we have books available um, that celebrate Dia, um, all different languages. Wow, cultures, look at all those backgrounds. And folks get to choose, right? What books they get to. Yes, they get, get to choose which book they want and which branch they would like to send it to so they can go to their closest branch. Um, and then one more thing, when Miss Mona was talking about poetry, um, this is also um, a choice that you can make with the form. It's a blank hardcover journal that you can use to write poems or stories or draw pictures of your own. So that's also something that you can choose by filling out the form. And again, I will place that link in the chat. I just imagine someone like writing it down super quickly right now. <laughs> yeah. It's in the chat. It's in the chat. <laughs> I will it, it's there. It's already there, but I will put it again so that you can be all refreshed. <laughs> so someone's not like <laughs> <laughs> That's what I imagine. And now uh our now for our final. So ladies and viewers, do you all want to guess what the final mm. celebration today will be? Mm, I changed our background. It's a little bit of a guess. You can kind of tell. Not I think Miss Joanna said something in the beginning about <gasps> it. I wonder if people or viewers remember. <gasps> There's an elephant. Did we talk about elephants? I mean, I don't know. I just did a small, <laughs> a little bit of a clue. Is anybody in the comments, you want to guess what I our see, last program is? It uh. is. I can't wait to see what happens when okay. Comic Con comes to town. 
So we are going to ask some of our other librarian friends to come in and join us for a puppet show. Hooray! Hello. All right, let's bring them up. Yay. There's Miss Mona. Mona. Miss Mona's there and, oh, there we go. Wow, Rolf, here we are at the famous PuppetCon where all kinds of puppets from all around the world gather to discuss important issues of the day. <laughs> Did you know that PuppetCon is dedicated to increasing the public's awareness of and appreciation for puppets from cultures around the world? <laughs> We have hands-on workshops and educational programming. Oh my, and lots of performances. Let's see what panels are going on right now. Now, where is my list? Rob, hold still. I'm trying to find my program. Oh, here it is. 11 in the Grand Ballroom, Puppetry Laid Bare. The truth behind the curtain. Hmm, I'm not sure about that. Oh, same time in the boardroom. Conflict resolution with Punch and Judy. Hmm, or in the theater. No strings attached. Marionettes discuss their deepest fears. I just can't decide. Ooh, maybe this one. Reclaiming our voices. Dummy speak up. Ralph, where are you going? Come back. Oh, no, he's going to get in trouble. I better go look for him. Oh, hello. My dear, we are in the middle of a demonstration. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. Are you some sort of caterpillar puppet? I beg your pardon. I am a lion dragon puppet from China. Oh my, what do you do? I symbolize power, wisdom, and superiority. I perform dances at Chinese festivals like Chinese New Year to bring good fortune and chase away the evil. That sounds scary. Scary? My dance is a way to create a festive atmosphere and bring happiness. It's been said my performances are vivid and entertaining, even comical. Watch this. Wow, you, do you have an itch or something? These dances are based on how lions behave, scratching, shaking, licking their fur. fur. Now watch this. That does look different. Thank you for showing me. These dances are closer to Chinese martial arts. In parades, I'm usually full size with several people helping me move. Well, what kind of puppet are you now? Well, right now I'm a marionette. I move with strings. I tug on the string and I move. Like me with my dog on a leash. <gasps> My dog, I almost forgot. I'm here because my dog has run away. Have you seen him? He's gray and scruffy and goes by Rolf. Hmm, Rolf, that's familiar, but no, I haven't seen him. Try the room across the hall. Thanks so much. The room across the hall. Now, which way is that? Oh, you scared me. Are you a marionette too? I am a rod puppet. You may call me Lord Krishna. Wow, you must be very important. I am one of the most popular Hindu gods worshipped throughout India. I am the eighth avatar of Vishnu, the Lord Creator God. Avatar? I love what can you ban? Earth, fire, air, or water? Not that, Avatar. I get that all the time. Thank you, Nickelodeon. My story is told in the Mahabharata, one of the longest poems in the world. Oh, I like poetry. Do you know Amanda Gorman? She's terrific. I agree. She is an extraordinary talent. Haikus are my favorite kind of poetry, though. 
Haikus are nice, but they only have three lines. The Mahabharata has over 75,000 verses. Performing it all can take up to 12 hours. How do you last that long? I do my best, Knockwood. <laughs> I do love your shade of blue. It's so flattering. Why, thank you. My blue aura symbolizes the infinite and the immeasurable. Like the sky? Why, yes. You're a very clever girl, you know. Say, would you like to stay for a performance of the Mahabharata? It's about ready to start. We're doing the short version, only nine hours. Uh, well, I was actually looking for my dog. Have you seen him? Gray, Scruffy, keep saying, Row. Yes, that's him. He went that way a few minutes ago. Looks like he was after some bones. <laughs> Thanks. Bones? What does he mean by bones? Greetings. Bones, oh my goodness. Hey, don't be startled. I'm a day of the dead marionette. <laughs> Why, I can see that. I'm so sorry. Don't be sorry. Day of the Day of the Dead is a Mexican celebration of life. It is the day that we remember and honor those who have left this world. Is it very sad? Actually, it's a joyous occasion. There are bright and colorful decorations everywhere, wonderful meals, street parties with music and dancing. In some places, they have processions with mass colorful costumes and puppets. That's where I come in. I have some great dance moves. I know how to shake these bones all night long. So, so it's actually a big party to celebrate everyone. Yes, that's a good way to put it. You know, that actually sounds kind of fun. We've got a demo procession all lined up. Would you care to join us? We're serving candy skulls. Well, that sounds delicious. Woof, woof, woof. Oh, sorry, I gotta go. Thanks for talking to me. It was my pleasure. Adios. Rolf, where are you? Where are you? Ah! A creature is coming to destroy us. Run, everyone! Save yourselves. Uh, hello. Are you guys okay? Okay, I should think not. We were getting ready for our finger puppet panel. Small is not all. Size does not matter with special guest Thumbelina when a frightening beast came roaring into our room. Gray, scruffy, and what was he saying? Roof, roof. Yes, roof, roof. Terrifying. We ran for our lives. Oh, I'm so sorry. That was my dog, Rolf. He's actually very friendly. Friendly? He could have taken us out with one bite. Well, he would be more likely to lick you. Ew, even worse, we're not waterproof. But I'm sure he would never hurt you. He's just curious. Ruff, ruff, ruff. Look out, here he comes again. Ruff, 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 come back, ruff, ruff, come back. Ruff, 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 ruff. I am a Wayang Kulit puppet, a shadow puppet to you. I come from Indonesia. I've been studying the Republic of Indonesia in my World Cultures class. It's the largest country in the world, and it's in Southeast Asia. Very good. It has over 17,000 islands, including Sumatra, Java, parts of Borneo, and New Guinea. But what do you mean shadow puppet? I can see you now. You're colorful, not shadowy. Ah, but if I do this, now you see my silhouette. Our shows can be watched from both sides of the screen. Wow, that's really neat. What kind of stories do you tell? Well, sometimes stories from great Hindu epics like the Ramayama and the Mahabharata. 
Oh, yeah, 75,000 verses. You do know your stuff. Did you know in these stories, the good characters are introduced on the right and the evil characters on the left? Well, that would make it easy to follow along. And sometimes we just tell local stories or legends. They can be quite funny and sometimes naughty. And they go all night long and end at dawn. I would be exhausted. Well, the audience doesn't always sit the whole time. They come and go, visit, eat, or nap. But they depend on the puppet master, the DeLong, to get their attention when an important scene comes up. The DeLong is an entertainer who must have a strong voice for songs and poems and a good sense of humor for telling successful jokes. Are you telling me it's one person doing all the puppets? Yes, seated, cross-legged, without taking a break the entire time. He's what you would call a rock star. A good Dalong is a celebrity who gets a high fee and can perform in front of thousands of people. His biggest responsibility is to teach people about Wei Yang Kulit, the meaning of the puppets, the philosophy behind the stories, cultural values, and the mysteries of the universe and human nature. Wow, you know, I've learned so much today. It seems that most cultures have had some sort of puppet tradition to tell stories, but they do it in different ways. They can use strings or rods or their hands and fingers to help tell the stories that explore what it means to be a human in our world. Indeed. Woof, woof, woof. Rob, it's me. Come here, boy. Oh, Rob, I'm so glad to see you again. I was so worried. Were you a naughty boy? I'm going to take that as a yes. I'm glad you've re been reunited with your charge. I must go now. I need to find a Starbucks. I have a long night ahead of me. Goodbye. And thanks for talking to me. I've learned so much. Gee, Rob. I have so many new things I want to see. Now, please stay with me. Hmm, I know. How about we go to the panel at 12 on the main level? Soft Puppet Theater, not just a show of hands. Ruff, ruff. I thought you'd like that. Now, don't go running off again, or I might have to turn you into a marionette. And if you kids want to learn more about puppets around the world, here are some resources for you in our chat. Bye, everyone. That was great. Yay. I hope he does find Starbucks, man. <laughs> I know, I know. Um, I That really spoke to me when um, they said that the puppeteer would just sing cross-legged and it was a one-person show. Um, I, I kind of felt that experiencing this two hours, but I'm so glad I, ha I wasn't by myself. I'm so glad to be hosting this celebration with you three senoritas. It's been so wonderful. <laughs> it's been great. What a great Friday afternoon it's been. It's yeah, been really I've had fun. a lot of fun listening to all of the celebrations from all around the world. It's been great mm -hmm. to learn about the way everybody celebrates Thea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And eat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> eat. Healthy. Yes. We got to hear C. We got to dance too. We gotta, so it's great. We had it all. Let's face it. We've had Absolutely. it all. <laughs> I wanted all right. to show one more thing. Um, and this is, I've been putting the, the tab all throughout the show, but um, I wanted everyone to be able to see what it, our DIA page looks like. So this is it. When you go into the Why? kids path or you go onto oh. kids fun DIA, you are connected with a lot of the books that we share during the month or the books oh. that you can have your choice of when you fill in the form. I'm going to put uh -huh. the link again one more time <laughs> in the chat. 
But everyone write it down super fast. Super fast. Everyone get ready. Get ready to write it down. Um, cut and paste. Cut and paste. Hard things right now. <laughs> yeah, but this is a river of books. Did you guys know that? That was a river of books. That's it. Oh, there it is. <laughs> One last time. Write it. Write it. Just copy write it paste. down, everyone. Or hold on. I'm copying. I am copying the link. <laughs> and now I'm going to the chat and everyone else. It's can go ahead and click on the link in the comments. Miss yes. Joanna, you are just uh, you are a tech guru. You know. Am I though? Am I? <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you everyone so much for joining us today. It was has been our honor to be here with you, especially with Miss Joanna. We were really honored when she asked the Senoritas to be here with her. <laughs> I hope everyone enjoyed learning and coming together to celebrate Dia. And remember, if you'd like to continue celebrating Dia with a book, as we keep telling you all, <laughs> Get please that <laughs> visit that link and uh, on the chat, that link, or go to the chat, link or chat, link yes. or chat. Link or chat, chat. <laughs> Books are, are only available while supplies last. Ladies, are they available till the end of the year? Uh, I mean, if the supplies May? last, <laughs> I don't know. That's, I don't know. Usually, over the weekend, it'd be gone. It's gone. So you guys fill get to get to out. do it now. It's more like and, this. Um, fill it out online. Quick, do it quick, <laughs> chick chick. Oh, also, I know we are early. We're really early because it's only April thirtieth. Can you end of April? Tomorrow's May first. But you know what's coming up. What's coming up, ladies? Oh, What's coming up? Summer reading. Summer. And summer reading. Summer reading. Summer reading. It's coming. <laughs> it's coming. June 7th. June 7th. June 7th. <laughs> and it lasts until August 7th. I mean, it's going to be a wow. summer of crazy fun. You're probably going to see us all I mean, summer. I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited. I, excited I have to something know. to do this summer, and uh, I'm occupied with summer reading. Oh, I mean, and let me show yeah. you the inside. Oh, there's an inside. Oh, oh, what a journey. <laughs> she gave us a small glimpse. Did you see her close that book so fast? And that's right. It's a glimpse because you all need to register, and you can register. Can you register on your phone? Yes. I think so. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. I'm doing it now. Use your, phone. Use your phone. Use your phone. Okay, so we're going to be collecting points for reading and completing fun learning-based activities where you can be entered into a drawing to win great prizes. And there's some amazing prizes because we're all about sustainability at the library. And we want you to visit us on lapl.org forward slash summer for some amazing virtual programs. And Miss Joanna's ukulele playing. <laughs> Wait, and wait, do you mean to tell me that not only do I get to see amazing virtual programs, but I also might win prizes for going to see them? Uh, <gasps> you can win prizes. You can win, a, oh, my bandanas <laughs> fell. You can win bandanas. You are gonna probably get a book. You might even win a uh, hydro flask. <gasps> oh, hydro. For water, for all yes. that good mm, Hydrate, it's hot, it's hot. Yes, yes. I bet. It's like hot or the other the was saying. Otter, he's gonna probably be signing up. I know Otter, he will. Otter the Potter wants that hydro flask. That's right, he's gonna be all about it. So, you know what, we wanna thank you. And once again, the Library Foundation of Los Angeles and to our amazing librarians oh, so here, amazing. behind the scenes, all over the city of Los Angeles. And without, without our librarians and our library staff, we wouldn't be as amazing. So uh, thank you for your support of DIA and all our programs for the children of Los Angeles. We're gonna see you real soon. I'll probably see you tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow? What's happening That's tomorrow? Awesome. Tomorrow, there's a STEAM night. <gasps> check, wow. check, out, uh, check out the library's uh, YouTube page. And Ooh. then next week, Miss Evans Joanna said, I think uh, Otter the Potter might be making <gasps> another appearance. Yes, yes. I wonder what Otter the Potter will be doing mm -hmm. next week. Yeah. Check it out. Yeah. Yeah. And, our puppet and our puppeteers, uh, they're <laughs> resting, I know, in the back. But Not I think again, to be. support early learners with our Music Mondays at 10 and then Story Times for the rest of the week, Tuesday through Friday. So very excited. All right. all right, everyone. It was nice being here with you all. 
Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. Have a good Bye. weekend. Bye. Adios. Adios. Adios.